In this video, we're going to come up with the formula for the derivative of a function given parametric equations. So say we have the following. Say we have x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Let's assume that these are differentiable and everything is nice and pretty. Then the formula for the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to dy dt over dx dt. It's a pretty easy formula to memorize um, because you see you have y over x and in the formula you have dy dt over dx dt so you have y over x. And this is valid as long as dx dt is not equal to zero. So this is a super important formula and it is extremely powerful because it gives you the derivative of y with respect to x whenever x and y are given as parametric equations. Let's go ahead and briefly, briefly derive the formula. So I'll just call it a proof and put it into quotes. So notice that dy dt is equal to dy dx dx dt. Okay, and again, you can do that via the chain rule, right? So the derivative of y with respect to t, well, you first take the derivative of y with respect to x, and then you take the derivative of x with respect to t. Notice the, the dx is canceled. It's just a trick. And since dx dt is not equal to zero, we can divide by dx dt. So since dx dt is not equal to zero. We can divide by it, so we'll divide by dx dt, divide by dx dt, and you see what happens is you end up with dy dx equal to dy dt over dx dt. So we get our formula, and that completes our really, really rough <laughs> uh, proof. Okay, so the formula is this one. So what about the second derivative? So let's say we wanted the second derivative. I'm going to write it up here. So say we wanted to come up with this. Okay, how would we come up with this? Well, this would be d dx of dy dx, right? Same thing. The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. And so now we would apply our formula over here. Let me use a different color. So think of this. This is your y here, right? This is d dx of y, okay? And here you have d dt of y. You see that? So this is your y here, okay? So this would be d dt of y, which is just dy dx. Let me explain that again because it's really sneaky. To, it's really hard to understand. So this is your y, this is your y, this is your y, this is your y. I'm going to use a different color just so you see. I'm going to use yellow. I'll switch to yellow. Maybe that'll help. This yellow, 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 yellow. See, it's d d t of the yellow. <laughs> and the bottom is the same. See, the bottom is just dx dt. So we're using the previous formula. So let me write it one more time in a convenient way. So the second derivative, it's just worth memorizing, is equal to d dt of dy dx over dx dt. And this would be the formula for the second derivative. Fortunately, we do not have to do the third derivative. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and do a problem. Let's do a simple example where we compute the first derivative and the second derivative. As before, in regular calculus, the first derivative indicates um, slope, and the second derivative indicates concavity. Uh, my advice is whenever you're doing these problems, write down the formula every single time. In fact, I'm going to scroll down so far that we can't even see the formula, so we'll, we'll be forced <laughs> to write it down again. So here's, here's an example. Let's go back to a really simple example that we saw uh, before. Let's look at the unit circle. So that's x equals cosine t, y equals sine t. These parametric equations will give us the unit circle. And let's just find the derivative, the first derivative and the second derivative. 
Uh, so find dy dx, and let's also find the second derivative. And let's do it at um, let's do it at theta equals how about uh, pi over two. So it's the unit circle, right? So at pi over two, at pi over two, the derivative should be zero because we have a horizontal tangent line. So dy dx should be zero when we plug in uh, pi over two. Okay, let's work through it. Solution. So first, let's recall the formula. So the formula for dy dx, it's a really good idea. Every time you do a problem, just write it down again. It's equal to dy dt over dx dt. Again, really easy to memorize because it's y over x, it's y over x. Um, I guess we can, I'll, I'll work them out over here. Let me just draw a little line. You could just, they're so easy, you could just plug it in, but let me write it down over here. So dy dt is the derivative of sine, so that's going to be cosine t. And dx dt is the derivative of cosine, so that's uh, negative sine. The reason I wrote them over here and didn't just plug it in is because we're going to need dx dt again later for the second derivative. So I was thinking, you know, let me just go over here and, and work it out, then plug it in. So let's see, let's check. dy dt, the derivative of sine, so it's cosine, looks good. dx dt, derivative of cosine is negative sine, looks good. Okay, so it'll be cosine t over negative sine t. So cosine over sine, that's, uh, that's cotangent. This is negative cotangent of t. So this would be the first derivative. Um, let's find the first derivative at pi over 2. So the first derivative evaluated at theta equals pi over 2 is equal to, that's the notation you use. You draw a line, and then you, you put the theta and the pi over 2. So you just plug in pi over 2 for your t. So it'll be cosine of pi over 2 over negative sine of pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 is uh, 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, so you get 0 over negative 1, so you get 0. So it agrees, right, it agrees with our intuition that we should have a horizontal tangent line at pi over 2. All right, let's find these second derivatives. Let's do this. So recall the formula for the second derivative. It's equal to, so the numerator is d dt of dy dx. I just have it memorized now. Eventually you memorize it. If you write it down every time you do a problem, eventually it sticks with you. And then dx dt. All right, so dy d, d dt of dy dx. So here's dy dx. So the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, but here it's already negative, so it's gonna be cosecant squared of t. And then on the bottom we have dx dt, which fortunately we saved. So negative sine t. So this is equal to, so cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. So when it comes downstairs, it's going to get multiplied. So it'll be 1 over sine squared t times 1 over sine t. So it'll give you a sine cubed. So this is negative 1 over sine cubed t. And that would be the second derivative. And we want to evaluate this at... Um, What's it called? At uh, uh, pi over 2. So theta equals pi over 2. That'll be negative 1 over sine of pi over 2 cubed. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so it's just negative 1 over 1 cubed, so it's just negative 1. So it's negative. And it makes sense. You know, it is, it is concave down here. So the concavity at pi over 2 is negative because it is, it is concave down. Nice example because, you know, you can think about everything graphically, too. You know, everything agrees. The slope is zero. The concavity is negative. So all is good. So the most important thing you should get out of this video, honestly, is probably the formulas. You want to just memorize these two formulas. So you have this one here, and you have this one here. If you can memorize the formulas, they're pretty easy to use. Just be careful and take your time. Good luck.